Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I am Pastor Tina Mackey from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Pennsburg, and we're glad you've joined us for worship. In today's Bible reading, we hear a story of two of Jesus' friends who are walking along and talking about all that had recently happened. Jesus' trial, crucifixion, the empty tomb, and even the story they heard from Mary about Jesus having risen. They were very scared and confused by all that was going on. They didn't know what to think. If Jesus was crucified, might they be punished too? Even though they heard the good news about the empty tomb, they didn't know if they should believe it or not. They were so scared and confused that when Jesus himself showed up and asked, what are you talking about? They couldn't see him. They didn't recognize who it was, and they thought it was a stranger. They walked with him and talked with him and even shared a meal with him, but they couldn't see who it was until Jesus revealed himself to them. Now, it may be easy to wonder how his friends didn't recognize him when they knew him for so long, but as someone who wears glasses, I know what it's like not to be able to see clearly sometimes. Until I got my glasses, I didn't even know what I was missing. I didn't know people could see individual leaves on trees. Now, sometimes it's hard to see what's right in front of you. Here, let me show you an example. Here, it's a simple message right in front of you. What, you can't see it? Oh, there's something in your way. There you go. Oh, you're still having trouble seeing it? Well, it's hard to see without proper focus. Okay, so now there's nothing in your way and you can see clearly. But you're still having trouble? Maybe, like Jesus' friends, it's hard to see from your current perspective. Let me see if there's something I can do to help. Sometimes our most important jobs of Christians is to reflect God's message so that others can see it. In today's confusing and scary times, what can you do to reflect God's love to others? A reading from 1st Peter. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. 
He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Wayne, and those are my feet. As you can see, I've got my walking shoes on today. I've noticed more and more people out in my neighborhood taking walks in recent weeks. So I thought perhaps today you and I could take a little walk. By the way, do you know how many steps the average American takes each day? Researchers say it's between five to 7,000. That adds up to about two to three miles, which isn't really bad. So let's get walking. Do you like to walk? One of my favorite walks is always the annual crop walk we had every October when I was a pastor in upstate New York. Lots of people would join in to fight against world hunger. That's what the walk was for. As we walked along the beautiful back roads of Rensselaer County, we enjoyed this colorful autumn foliage. And we always, always had a great time chatting with each other along the way swapping stories, and the community news it was cool because you never knew who you might meet along the way. As was the case with Cleopas and his friend, according to St. Luke, 
They were out walking that first Easter day when a stranger joined them. Now, you and I, we all know who that stranger was. It was Jesus, but they didn't. Our risen Lord still meets us today in lots of ways. He's not confined to any one place or time. And we're beginning to realize that more and more because we can't gather at our own church buildings. So where have you seen Jesus lately? How have you experienced his presence? Perhaps it was in the kindness of someone. Maybe it was when someone called to say hello and just to see how you're doing. Jesus shows up in so many ways. Martin Luther wrote that this mutual conversation and consolation we share with one another is one of the ways that the gospel is made known. So, tell you what, let's be on the lookout for Jesus. And also, let's continue our walk. People did lots of walking in Bible times. I read it was upwards of 20 to 25 miles a day. No wonder foot washing was such an important activity back then. The Bible says even God enjoyed a good walk. The author of Genesis says God walked in the Garden of Eden, enjoying the evening breeze. And of course we know Jesus walked a lot, even on water sometimes. Walking with Jesus, I wonder how much the disciples must have learned about God. Because with Jesus, class was always on the go. It's amazing what they must have picked up about God's ways. Cleophas and his friends certainly learned a lot about God that afternoon. Jesus ran them through all Moses and all the prophets. Hey, how's that for a quick confirmation class? Scripture still teaches us about God. The Holy Spirit works through it, making the good news very much alive to us even today. With all the days we now have at home, maybe this is a good opportunity to read a little bit more about Jesus. A lot of stories are set in those frightening, challenging times, like the ones we're experiencing today. But as Jesus interprets to us how God is at work, he brings us a sense of peace and hope. Those are the things we all need. So with Jesus, the learning never stops. Friends, let's be on our way for a little further time in our walk here. Walking builds up our health. Some of the physical benefits include increased heart and lung fitness, greater muscle strength, and reduced body fat. Walking also nurtures our spiritual health. Lorraine and I often go out and take walks, and they just refresh us, lift up our spirits. You know, the blossoming trees, the singing birds, the cool, caressing breezes, the warmth of the sun, the simple beauty of quietness. There's so many things to discover when you're out walking. Cleopas and his friend, you know, and I, I wish we really knew his friend's name. They made a grand discovery at the end of their walk. They asked the stranger to stay with them for an evening meal and rest because they enjoyed his presence. They desired his presence and they found their faith growing in his presence. And they discovered his willingness to do so. As St. Luke tells us, he went in to stay with them. Back in the church in Hudson, New York, where I grew up, a huge mural rose up behind the altar. It showed Jesus walking with those two disciples on their way to Emmaus. And a large gold print above it arched the words, I am with you always. One discovery we can make is that we're never alone. Jesus walks with us every day, whether on the front lines or behind the lines, whether at home or out at an essential business. Jesus always keeps us company. Hey friends, 
Ready for one more lap? Great, let's keep going. Have you ever wandered off the beaten path while taking a walk? I know I have. It was January of 1980. I was in Athens, Greece as part of a trip organized by Gettysburg College. After lunch, I left the hotel and just started walking. And soon I was standing atop Mount Lycabettus, a jagged 908 foot peak that rises up out of the city. I hadn't intended on walking there. I was just going to stick close to the area of the hotel. But sitting there atop the hill, looking out at the sun-drenched city and the Aegean Sea, I never felt closer to God. And that moment changed my life. New pathways often open up to us, much to our surprise as it did for Cleopas and his friend that day long ago. Once they discovered who the stranger was, they headed back to Jerusalem to share the good news of what had happened on the road as they were walking. They'd become Easter witnesses. In these perplexing, trying days that we're going through, gotta ask, what new pathways has God set you on? Maybe you're making masks. Maybe you're sending cards. Maybe you're delivering food. Maybe you're checking on your neighbors. But make no mistake about it, you've become an Easter witness too. You're on the path of discipleship. Friends, thanks for taking this walk with me. Hope you have a great week. And remember, as the prophet Micah says, walk humbly with God. Have a great week, everyone. Amen. Hi, everyone. During the current COVID-19 pandemic, we feel we have been very blessed and feel God's presence in our lives on a daily basis. I think throughout this pandemic, we are able to see our blessings even more clearly than we have before. The blessings are really too numerous to name, but to name a few, Guy and I are extremely grateful that we are still working as we are both essential workers and are able to maintain employment throughout this crisis. As we know, so many friends and family have lost their jobs during this time and our hearts and prayers go out to them. Most importantly, we are also extremely grateful that our immediate and extended family has been blessed with staying healthy and well. We have learned to never take anything for granted and not even the little things. We've learned so many positives that we can take away from this crisis. Yes, I'm very grateful that situation isn't worse than it has become. And I am just trying to stay on the positive side of things. I miss singing for everybody at church and seeing everybody in person. And I hope everybody is staying safe. Stay safe, everyone. We hope to see you soon. Stay safe. Stay healthy and well. Hi. Um... When the pastor asked us to share a little, a, bit, a little about our faith and what it's meant over the past few weeks, um, for me it's been just knowing God's peace and knowing that he's in control that's kept me going through this. It's also been great having Tim home, um, even though he would disagree and say he'd much rather be at school. You know, I'd definitely much rather be at, be at school for the end of my senior year. There are a lot of things I was looking forward to, um, but... It has been been nice being home with my parents and being able to cook and um, before I go off to college, just spending some time with them. Well, it's been great having Tim and it's been great, particularly that we're all together as a family. It would have been much harder had we been separated. Um, but for me, one verse keeps coming to mind and that's uh, 1 Peter 5 verse 7. It says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And that verse has been running through my mind continually the last few weeks and it's a verse that I learned when I was much younger than even Tim is now at summer camp and it stayed with me. Um, we can't plan for the future right now but we can leave everything in God's hand and we know that he cares for us.
Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God, the author of life, surprise us anew each day with the beauty and joy of Easter. May we find signs of the resurrection all around us in creation, in our families, in our lives, in our country. Lord, in your mercy, God, the source of our unity. While we are separated from our loved ones, while we remain at home and we long to be out and about, keep us connected to one another, to our loved ones, to our friends and neighbors, and to our churches. Lord, in your mercy. God, our creator, continue to heal the planet even as we struggle with our own sickness and suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the nations, give wisdom to leaders who must make difficult decisions for the people they govern. Grant peace to the nations torn apart by war and political unrest. Create among all the nations a spirit of respect, compassion, and cooperation. Lord, in your mercy. God, our healer, encourage and strengthen those who face any illness, especially those suffering with COVID-19. Guide the work of doctors, nurses, researchers, and all who work for our health and well-being. Grant them safety as they risk their lives. Protect the health of their families. Thank you for all whose work puts them at risk of catching COVID-19. For our essential workers, may we treat them with respect and gratitude. Lord, in your mercy. God, the Alpha and Omega. You were with us at our birth and you are with us at our death. For those who have lost loved ones and could not say their final goodbyes, may they find comfort in the knowledge that you were with them. For those who grieve a loss, loss of loved ones, loss of job, loss of celebrations, loss of opportunities, may they find hope in knowing that both today and tomorrow are in your hands. Lord, in your mercy, with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord.